Everybody and welcome to this brand new episode of the Hot Mic here on the Outlaw Nation channel. I am the Outlaw, John Roca. Excited to be diving into all the week's entertainment news that's fit to print and not fit to print here with the insider himself, Jeff Snyder. How are you, Jeff? I'm good, Johnny boy. Happy 420 to all who celebrate. And to oh, all shit. Who Is like that I'm today? I forgot that was today. I don't even know what day of the week it is, dude. I really you don't. Know? Uh, you know, I'm I'm I'm, I'm uh, kind of out there right now. I'm you live in front of a green screen. You don't even know what reality is. <laughs> That's for sure. I'm still rattled by losing our blue check marks, Jeff. What 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 do we do? What do we do with our lives without a blue check mark? You know what? We don't need to treat the blue check mark people. Like, they have committed this insane crime. That's 100% true. Blue. Like, it has been pretty crazy, the things that I've seen today. Like, look at this piece of shit with his blue check mark. It's like, easy, bro. <laughs> I don't understand. People are so upset. I might still pay for it. So people are so upset. They're like, you, you, we're going to block people who have the blue check marks. Like, guys, you can have the blue check. It's like the masks. It's like, if you're okay with people not wearing masks or people wearing masks, like, be equal in the whole thing. So if people want to pay for Twitter Blue, let them pay for Twitter Blue. It's their fucking money. They work hard for it. If they want to subscribe to the subscription service, fine. I'm sure there are some subscri sub subscription services that you all subscribe to that people who are in charge of those subscription services have done some nefarious shit. So, like, you can't be sitting out here sanctimoniously uh, judging other people for having uh, for paying for Twitter Blue. So, Let's make John Roca say subscription three times. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, I got caught up in a fucking time loop. No, but like, uh, how many of these celebrities are like, I'm not paying for fucking Twitter Blue. Fuck Elon Musk, and then they drive home in a fucking Tesla. That's why I said in my tweet, I don't have these celebrity. Uh, the celebrity cachet with millions of followers to be like, I will not pay for Twitter blue and making some fake principled stand. That means nothing. Give me, I respect the people who are down in the areas we are in the kind of relatively number, relative numbers of followers that we have saying they don't want to pay for it. I respect that. Just don't vilify people who do want to pay for it and can't afford the $84 a year or this $8 a month, whatever it may be. You know, there are some benefits to it in terms of, editing in terms of reach and i'm certainly still considering it today about whether it's worth it and i had twitter blue before elon took the twitter over because of that and or tweets so i was like i'm going to edit my tweets from now on in case there are any issues so you know it was my own personal thing why i did that so we'll see but anyway we got a lot to get into certainly there's some updates on jonathan majors there are some rumored marvel casting calls that are happening there's some casting news that is broken here over the last hour Juno Temple in the Venom 3 movie. We're going to talk about it all, jump into some trailers as well, do an Evil Dead Rise non-spoiler review. That's coming out this weekend along with the, um, oh, I forget. What was the Jake, uh, what's the Jake Gyllenhaal one again? The, the Covenant. Covenant. Yeah, Excuse me, that's Guy Ritchie's The Covenant to you. Guy Ritchie, that's all right. Guy Ritchie's The Covenant. <laughs> Not William Shakespeare's The Covenant. Guy Ritchie's The Covenant, absolutely. Uh, we're going to get into all of that here. And please remember to subscribe to the channel right off the bat if you haven't done so. So many of you come and join us. We had almost 20,000 views last week on the episode, which we appreciate madly. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that bell button as well. And the stream labs and super chats are open. I already see some stream labs that have come through. You see the address right above Jeff's head. I'm going to pin it in the chat in just a second. So send in your questions and comments early because we do get to them throughout the show. But you know, we wrap up when we wrap up, which is usually about an hour, a little bit over an hour. So uh, let's get ready. Um, Jeff, where do you want to start with the Jonathan Major stuff or something a little more lighter? Where are you feeling? I think we have to start where we... You know, went last week, bro. Okay, bro. Go ahead. The update that I got after last week's show, guys, where I put out the, the thing about David Fincher and Squid Game. Yes. I heard he's doing it. No! <laughs> Breaking it I, I right heard, off the bat. I heard I, I was like, the, the email I got was, you're spot on. He's working on it. So, so the email you got from your source verifies that david fincher oh, is no, actually no, no. this is from a, a separate source yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. this is you know who, who's also been you know very very uh good 
And he said, right. I, I, I nailed it. And that Fincher is working on it. But Jeff, are you sure you're not just saying that because you're forced to come up with scoops and rumors every week for a show and you're being put on, you know, you're making this stuff up just to get attention for yourself or for the show. Are you sure this right. is real? Right. <laughs> 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 yeah, uh, who I don't know what it was that BGR or something. They wrote a, a very non-flattering uh, piece about our, our rumor last week. Did oh uh, yeah, of course. I mean, I love know, that give... the people who say don't be toxic write toxic shit. It's the most hilarious, uh, hypocritical bullshit that I see all the time in this space. I don't know, but toxic. I'm a big boy. You can let me fight my own battles. I know oh, you. Sorry. You, like go ahead. you like to go to war, and uh, you just kind of like I don't know. Um, so, okay. The Fincher thing. I've heard something's up with the Safdie movie. Okay. Like, I, I don't know what, I can't get to the bottom of it, okay. but it is very interesting that Netflix, if this is in fact going this summer, like hasn't said really anything about it. N none of the trades have confirmed any of the castings. I just wonder if it's falling apart in the wake of that Sebastian Bear McClard, you know, story, which painted them in a very, uh, not flattering light. Uh huh. Mm hmm um so you know those are just like two you know sort of follow-ups on things that have been uh you know sort of constants here um okay. what have i heard here's an interesting one john that you might okay. find interesting okay um a while back i think amazon got this script it was a western script from yes nick, from nick pizzolato okay you mentioned this a few weeks ago, the Nick Pixelato stuff at, at uh, Prime. Is there something extra? I'd heard that they're going to take this script and like convert it into a Magnificent Seven movie. So either wow. like a, a new Magnificent Seven movie or something in the Magnificent Seven universe. Right, right, right. In order to basically you know, take advantage of the whole MGM, like, you know, the, the IP in the library. They're like, all right, we, we bought MGM. Now we have to take advantage of it. Like you don't right. buy something and then leave the, you know, play with the toy for a little bit and put it in the corner. I mean, yeah. you know, children do, but uh, you know, they really want to make the most out of this like MGM library thing. And so I've heard that, yeah, Pizzolatto's script is going to be converted wow. into a Magnificent Seven or something. Well, I mean, you know, in that story that uh, broke uh, about a week and a half, two weeks ago, about the IP that Prime and MGM were working on, the Magnificent, which we talked about a month ago, the Magnificent Seven um, title was on that list. So it would make sense for Nick Pizzolatto to create something that worked. And that is still a classic film. It just came out in 4K a few weeks ago. I watched it. On the, on the TV here in the room, because I love that Western. It's my second favorite Western. And so I would love to see something that did better than the Fuqua remake did and maybe a little bit better than that TV series did from the 90s or early 2000s and see what, what he can create from that world. It wouldn't necessarily be probably a straight remake. Maybe it focuses on the adventures of Chris um, and the Steve McQueen character where they're going or maybe a, a couple of other characters. Remember, there are three or four sequels to The Magnificent Seven. So there's stuff to play with there in that universe for sure. I have a little bit of Star Wars juice. <laughs> Wait, Magnificent Eight. You just broke my brain. You just broke my brain. Hey, yeah. <laughs> All um, right, Star Wars. What do you got for Star Wars? A little bit of Star Wars stuff. So remember we talked about how there was an actor attached, you know, to the uh, Damon Lindelof project who sort of came with him. We were yeah. guessing maybe it was, you know, yeah, yeah, because he'd worked with him on Watchmen and all that right. stuff. Well, whoever that actor was, whoever it turned, you know, whether it was Brian Tyree or Henry, whoever it was. Yeah. Uh, that person was no longer attached. Okay. To that project. Um, and mainly because of the story changes, right? Because okay. they, they threw out Lindelof's script, right? They brought in Stephen Knight. So obviously there right. were story changes. And so that actor, whoever that was, is no longer attached. I'm told that that... Um, you know, we've been saying all along on this podcast that the at the uh, SOC project, I guess uh, it's no longer the Lindelof project. It's now mm -hmm. the Stephen Knight SOC project um, is going to be that the, the, the movie that Lucasfilm releases in December 2025. Uh, and to that end, I'm told that that project is going to start pre-production in August. And so mm -hmm. casting is going to start around then. So, wow. you know, there may be they may be making lists right now yeah. at Lucasfilm um, as far as who they want in that movie. 
but I don't think if they're, that they've gone out to any talents. I don't think that they necessarily will until after the summer. Hmm. So I would expect answers before Labor Day. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, I mean, again, I said this, I think, last week on a couple of the channel or shows that I host here on the channel that I think it's incredibly odd that they're going to lead with a film that connects to the sequel trilogy, which they just, it's been pretty much universally said that it wasn't a good trilogy and kind of stopped the production on feature films for a while from Lucasfilm and Disney. So it's ironic that they're going to launch with a new film that has a character and possibly two. I'll tell you this, I'll break this for myself. According to some sources that I know, a couple of sources, different sources, have reached out to me because of this show, and they have said to me that according to them and what they're hearing is that John Boyega will be coming back for this movie. That's what I'm hearing from a couple of my sources oh, and I trusted see. people that last, I know of. Last week I'd said that it was, you know, they'd have to, you know, it was all but certain that he, he talked about resisting it, but that they really wanted him back and, you know, if they were willing to pay him enough. Uh, yeah, the rumor. Okay, so you, you think you think you're advancing that. You're taking that one step further. And you're saying he's doing it just like I sort of did with Fincher. Yes, I am. Because from what I understand from these two sources that I trust, and I've been right a number of times, including giving me the DC slate before the DC slate came out, before that meeting actually happened, even before you uh, uh, went to that meeting, I was told a couple of the titles, three of the titles, and ended up being correct. This person is telling me that Kathleen Kennedy and John Boyega had a conversation, buried the hatchet, and that the, the, um, the money and all that stuff was... And so once that was smoothed over, then negotiations started to happen. And it's no surprise if you remember that interview that he did recently, with, I think of John Fugel saying on his show on Sirius XM, he spoke much more objectively, much more glowingly, much more honestly, with more perspective about his time in Star Wars. And Daisy really kind of did the same a few months ago as well. Once this, the language starts to soften, that's when the possibility of returning to something opens up. Because as human beings, you just wait a little while, the, the emotions calm down, and you can negotiate. And so my belief is that, or for what I'm hearing, is that John Boyega will be back in this movie. So I, I would not be surprised. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, that's that's a big scoop, uh, you know. Um, and that's I like when, this, when, when we break big scoops on this podcast and when I'm not on the hook, when I can't get yelled at. <laughs> so Lucasfilm, don't come after me for that one. Yeah, come, uh, come put me on. Oh, John, John says that, you know. John will be back. Interesting. That's what I hear. Um, regarding uh, the Mandalorian and, and yeah. Pedro Pascal, uh, I'm told that Pedro not being in the Mandalorian finale was a scheduling thing. Like which, like taking the helmet off, you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, yeah. He wasn't seen or whatever in the Mandalorian finale. That was simply a matter of scheduling with The Last of Us, um, which is in first position for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and that he was on set for a couple of episodes this past season and that he's not going anywhere. Ooh. So I just wanted to reassure fans, uh, you know, who, who, and, and, and that's, I guess, one thing I wanted to say about our little podcast here is mm -hmm. like, man, I'm getting Google alerts of just like, it is just a wild and crazy game of telephone that the that the internet really becomes. Like, I'll say something, I yeah. say it very specifically in word things, a very, you know, particular way and it's they just get twisted yeah yeah and, uh, and, and it's, it's you know it's pretty it's pretty wild um i never said that pedro pascal was leaving i was, I, I i said you know that my source thought that that was a possibility right um, but uh believe me a, a good source assures that he's not going anywhere okay all right there you go but yes this was the first season of the mandalorian where he did not show his face it was all helmet all season so interesting stuff but he's probably shooting last of us so you know recording from there. yeah exactly he's been busy with that the same source john uh, had had some bad news for you though oh no they're they're getting a little worried about uh transformers <laughs> well so they wanted to caution you in this draft that's coming up today. <laughs> You're already playing this, yeah. this is what they said they said that transformers has gone through close to a dozen different editing teams that have yeah. argued about different cuts of the film. Um, I got to be honest. Yeah. A, a few weeks ago, a friend who's a source of mine who has connections with that studio and people involved in that situation told me the same thing. 
he had heard that the movie is a mess and that they're trying to fix it. Now, did that affect the movie being on my draft list? I don't know. And by the way, for those of you joining us, maybe you didn't see our social media, later on this episode, Jeff's going to lead us in a summer movie draft of 2023. Yeah. All right, we're, we're going to pick out 10 movies that we think are going to win the summer, and you all will decide whose slate was better, and we'll check the comments. Once it was that. that. I'll get into it. Yeah, like yeah. in like 20, 25 minutes. But, um, yeah. you know, do, do we want to take a, a commercial break? Do we want to talk majors now? Do you want to talk? Let's talk majors now, and then we'll do a commercial break. We only need to take one every half an hour. So on the okay. podcast. So, um, yeah, let's jump, on, let's jump into it. The Jonathan major stuff. Um, this has now become a bit of a PR war now that we're seeing because, you know, we saw, we heard earlier this week that Jonathan Majors, both a management team and his pub, uh, publicity team, lead company and, and management 360 dropped Jonathan Majors. And of course, it would have been quiet. Jeff and I were commenting how quiet it was about this whole situation last week. And then boom, this happened, which led people to believe that there may be more going on. I did an episode of The Nation earlier this week, kind of breaking down those uh, the uh, decision by them to do that. And while I was doing the show, another uh, bit of news dropped that he had been dropped from a number of film projects, including an Otis Redding biopic and a couple other films that he had been circled for or had been attached to or had been in conversations for. He was also dropped from a Texas Rangers baseball campaign. The Army commercials have stopped as well. And there's also another, oh, and he stepped down from the Sidney Poitier uh, Foundation there, which helped up-and-coming filmmakers of color. And so there was a lot of things. And Valentino said that he cannot come and represent their brand at the Met Gala. Probably the worst stung string of all is that can't be at the Met Gala as their guest. So, But then today, they came, uh, his lawyer came out and she, issued, she said that there is evidence and uh, pictures of the woman who accused Jonathan Majors of these uh, things of being at the club at from 1 a.m. to 3 a.m. I'm, I'm paraphrasing here that there are videos of her un, unhurt, no bruises. The hands have no cuts. The, the ear that was supposedly lacerated is totally fine. According to the attorney, you can see this on the video. And they submitted this evidence. The L.A. Times did an article about it today, like looking at all the evidence. They had got a chance to look at all the evidence and they were detailing all this stuff. Apparently, she was at the club. She's at the DJ booth. They're insinuating that uh, there was drug use and, and uh, drinking and that uh, Jonathan Majors got jumped out of the taxi at 11 p.m. that night, got out of the car, and apparently the driver and three witnesses can claim that he dropped out, jumped out of the car. The driver apparently can claim that it was the woman who was attacking him physically and tearing his clothes. He jumped out of the car, got into another car, and drove away, or another taxi and drove away. She went forward, kept doing her night, club and all that. He didn't see her again, according to the attorney now. He didn't see her again till the next morning when he got a locksmith to open his bedroom and she was there um, in the closet. And so there's a lot of he said, she said. There's a lot of all this stuff going on. But, Jeff, this just all feels like a lot of mess. And although he may not be 100% guilty, people dropping him, movie studios walking away from organizations not wanting to have a part of this, this can't bode well for him to stay as Kang and Marvel. What do you think? Okay, so I didn't know a lot of that. Um, oh, okay. I didn't know that whole story. I hadn't read that LA Times article. Um, I mean, listen, we weren't there, and, and we don't know. You know like, we, not we definitely have to wait for more information. Yeah, more women came forward as well, Jeff. I don't know if you saw right, that. That's the thing. It's not just this one incident. That's not what we're right. you know, uh, talking about anymore. It sounds like yes. there's multiple women who came forward to the to the DA. You're right, yes. Yeah. Um, it's a sad situation. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, this is like Denzel's career getting derailed in the mid nineties or something like this guy right. was like, yeah. you know, and, and even if he does get off, unfortunately th there's always this like taint ar around his name now, almost yeah. like a, not, not that Nate Parker was, was innocent at all, you right, know, right. Um, but like, there's always a, uh, this, this sort of stain uh, and, and it follows him. And, and that's really unfortunate. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you know, again, whether, whether he did anything or not. Um, so like what I had heard is that, you know, in talking to agents and reps around town, I mean, it's clear everybody is waiting for Marvel. 
Yeah. Right. They're all waiting to take their cues from Marvel. That's why he hasn't been dropped from the Dennis Rodman project. Right. And he doesn't want to quit any projects right now either. Because, you know, I think that he want he believes that he's going to be vindicated in court or whatever. Yeah. But, it's, you know, the agents that I've felt that I've talked to do feel like he is going to wind up recusing himself um, to avoid being fired, basically. That, that, oh, that, he's going to step down. Yes, that, that, that basically Disney's going to want him to step down and rather than fire him, they're going to sort of leave it up to him and it'll be like an army's hammer sort of shotgun wedding thing where it's mm. like I'm stepping down and Lionsgate's really supportive of my decision and right. I just want to need to be with my family right now. That to me feels like the direction that this is going, mm. you know, um, I mean... I reached out to Marvel about some of this stuff and, and did not hear back and understandably so like I didn't really expect them to necessarily comment um, because they don't have to yet. And, and I think it, like I said, they're, they are waiting uh, for the legal such, you know, legal proceedings to play out as is another Disney owned division of the company. Mm. Right. Which is searchlight. Right. So searchlight bought, magazine dreams coming out of Sundance. Right. And this right. guy is phenomenal in magazine dreams. Mm -hmm. The problem is, and this is like the Will Smith emancipation thing almost, although yeah. far worse. I, I you know far 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 worse. Yeah. Uh, I mean he's he's playing like a violent like sociopath in <sighs> magazine dreams. Um, there, I don't think there's any way that that movie can come out this year, um, yeah. you know, unless really he just gets off Scott clean and, you know, and like this all goes away in the next few months. I don't think that, movie, that there's any chance that that movie can come out this year. And I don't think that they're doing anything right now with it. I don't think it, anybody at Searchlight is even working on magazine dreams until right. they figure out, is this a movie that we're even actually putting out? So that's wow. where I think Jonathan Major's stuff stands. Yeah. It basically, the status quo hasn't changed, right? Right. It's we're waiting for things to happen, but clearly this week was not a good one for him. Yeah. And, and that Dennis Rodman project that I mentioned, that's another guy who like pled no contest to. Yeah, Dennis. Yeah. As a battery, there's no fucking way Jonathan Majors is, or his team is going to let him go play that role. So that's done. That's there's no way he's playing Dennis Rodman. Stop. It's such a shame because I want to see that story. Uh, and certainly, Dennis, certainly Jonathan has spoken glowingly about playing Rodman in that film. So it's a shame. I mean, but then again, we don't know, right? Like you said, we don't know. There could come, if there's incontrovertible evidence, and we as the public get to see this video and get to look at these and look at the timestamps and all this stuff. And if it becomes these people have come forward, but then it kind of falls away, like they, they were kind of circumstantial stuff or whatever. Mm -hmm then people start to change their minds about it, you know, and, and start to look at this thing. I agree with you at this point, looking at what we have so far, a smart move may be for Jonathan to go, you know what? I don't want to be a distraction for Marvel. I really appreciate them taking a chance on me. Clearly this is something I need to navigate and take some time on. I'm going to step down from playing Kang. I'm sure they have someone else who can take the place and I'm going to move on and work on other things or work on myself or work on the situation and what have you, and I hope to come out of it a better person, and then boom, you move out, you, you kind of go away, we're about to talk as Aziz Ansari, same thing happened to him from one accusation, he kind of laid low for a little while, then was able to come back, and, and what have you, so maybe there's this, I, in no way am I excusing if there's anything that happened, of course not, I'm not, if there's anything that happened, of course you feel for the woman, you want her to get uh, the help, and the therapy, and, and, and somehow deal with the situation, if this is an abusive situation, to get out of it, of course, but looking at it career-wise, a smarter move is to maybe step down. Then again, who knows? Maybe he's a fighter, and he's like, no, man, I earned this shit. No one's going to take it away from me. No one's going to come up with these false accusations to take right, something from know, me that I learned. If, you, know, I don't, if you didn't do anything, like you, I think, I, I, mean, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what a Hollywood PR team would recommend. Yeah. You know, if you yeah. were really totally innocent, you're like, you know, do, do you scream, kick and scream and, and yeah. you know, fight? Uh, or, or is it just like, you know what? I don't want to be a distraction. Is that the thing? I, I, I don't know. But, and I agree with the, the people in the comments who are saying this has like nothing to do with the Ezra Miller situation. I think it's a completely Oh, yeah. Different that's so. And when, I've and when seen... people use the play the race card and, and all that stuff, like, I'm just like, come on. No. No. 
No. I mean, this is not even remotely close. The situations are not similar. I saw someone trying to compare it on Twitter to Dana White. I'm like, it's not even the fucking, it's not even in the ballpark. It's just completely different things at all. You can't just go, apples look like apples to me. I don't care what you say. It's like, that's a fucking pineapple. What are you talking about? So it's two different things here when you look at it. Two different, three different situations if you want to throw the Dana White thing in there. The Ezra yeah. stuff is completely different. Of course, there was assault. And yes, there were violations or whatever, but this that movie was already in the can, except for some reshoots. And it was, and Warner Brothers just wasn't going to tank that movie with the amount of money he was making. This is still kind of in the air. So he can step down and move out of this situation. There's no guarantee Ezra's going to stay as the Flash after this movie, no matter what people are saying. So this is the thing that's the difference. Now, Loki season two, that's a separate situation, kind of the same situation WB in, in, in terms of like, I don't, they're not going to go reshoot all those scenes with Jonathan Majors at a time when Bob Iger is like, we're cutting costs here at Disney. There's no way they're going to do that. So that's just going to stay what it is. It's about the future stuff. And that'll going to be have to going to have to be negotiated. But just to, let me I'm, I just want to give a little clarification here. This is what uh, the attorney says that the accuser on March 25th between midnight and 1 a.m. Went, quote, clubbing, got drunk, sent Mr. Majors angry text messages, accusing him of infidelity, sent a suicide note to Mr. Majors, took a bunch of sleeping pills, and then 11 hours later was found alone in a locked bedroom, unconscious, on the floor of a closet with a cut behind her ear and a broken finger. That's what they're claiming, and that there's footage from her being at the club, Lucy's Nightclub, at the Moxie Lower East Side, between 1.55 a.m. and 3.06 a.m. She's at the DJ booth, the bar, and the hostess stand, where you can see uninjured hands and uh, she pushes her hair past her ear that was supposedly lacerated and it is not lacerated. So there's just that kind of stuff that's out there now. And you balance the, that against people who are coming forward. Uh, the, drug so could, use, the drug yeah. use in that article that, that you'd mentioned the LA times one, is that attributed to her or to him or to both to her, to her and the sleeping pills and uh, drinking and the sleeping pills combo. So, but th here's the deal. Two things could be true, Right. It could be true that she's uh, making a false accusation here, but it could also be true that all these women coming forward have validity to their claims. So that is something that you look at. Now, if both of them are valid and are proven valid, then you've got yourself a bad situation. But if it's even if it's but if it's one side valid and the other isn't, you still got a bad situation. Both of these things have to be seen as invalid for it not to be an issue that affects Jonathan Majors going forward. I think at least in, my that in the eyes of the law. Mm -hmm. You're innocent until proven guilty, but in the eyes of Disney, yeah, in the eyes right. Of Marvel, in the eyes of the public, you're guilty until proven innocent. So, right, you know. But look, I appreciate this. Brian saying Charlie Sheen held a knife to his. Ex. I get that. Charlie Sheen ain't a fucking A-lister. It's a whole other ball game. Charlie Sheen is not fucking Jonathan Majors. Okay, Charlie Sheen is down here trumming in the sitcom waters. Up here is where Jonathan Majors is, the lead villain of a massive franchise. For a family-friendly company like Disney. Two different things. Charlie Sheen at the time was the highest paid person on television. He was a way bigger star. <sighs> Everyone knows sure. Charlie Sheen. He'd be on the cover of every magazine, every tabloid. Sure, but no one was like, Charlie should be the lead in a Marvel movie. No one was fucking saying no. that, dude. You know, no. It was two oh, and a half men for fun. Absolutely not. But, I mean, I don't think that there's any question that Charlie Sheen at that point was certainly a bigger star than Jonathan Majors. Sure. Well, at that time, sure, because nobody knew who Jonathan Majors was. But no, I mean, but if you compare Charlie I'm Sheen's height, right you compare Charlie Sheen's height of popularity to Jonathan Majors' height of popularity, those are two fucking different things. That's all I'm getting at. All right. Anyway, uh, so we'll see what happens. Uh, what is your what if right now, gun to your head, what do you think happens? I know it's a I terrible think, analogy. I, I don't think he continues on, particularly because this is a character who you can have variants of, and there's just right. all this. All it's just too easy to 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 be, you can do with a snap of your finger, really, right? Yeah. Do you think they wait? Like Marvel I saw some people saying Disney's got time to make this decision, but other people are like, no, they got to make this decision now in order to kind of. No, I, I think that they do wait. I don't think that okay. um, you know Disney doesn't really have its hand forced, uh, especially yeah. by social media. You know, the people who are like, no, they got to make a decision now. You know, like, no, you just want them to make a decision now. Yeah. Um, so, you know, but but ultimately, whether Disney fires him and that's how it's framed or if he whether he steps down of his own accord. 
it, it doesn't seem like a marriage that's going to work out in the long run, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and I do think that it will end. Okay. All right. Yeah. I kind of feel like it's, I, I think it's got to happen in the next couple of months or they're going to wait. I think it either happens in the next couple of months or they're going to wait this thing out for a little while to see what happens. That's what I think. And we're going to find out May 8th. Remember last week, though, when I mentioned Damson Idris, like the guy booked a role with Brad Pitt, and I'm like, that's the kind of actor that they'll be looking at. All of a sudden, it's Damson Idris to replace Jonathan Majors. Mm -hmm. Guys, please, please, someone do a good translation. Listen to this show, something. All right, well, let's take a quick break. We'll hit some of these uh, Streamlabs and Super Chats, and then we'll jump into some other stuff as well right after this. All right, we got 600 of you watching us right now live. Thanks so much for joining us. Please make sure you hit a like on this video. Share it on your social media. Subscribe to the channel. Really, I can't reiterate this enough. Subscribe to the channel down below. Hit that bell button. Just cross 27,100 subscribers. I got to get to 50. By the end of the year, help me do that. Subscribe down below and hit that bell button as we go along. All right, Jeff, let's hit some of these stream labs because stream labs, uh, people donate more. I got to give them love here. Orange Chicken says, John and Jeff, y'all are beautiful people and we love you. Thank you. Question for Jeff. Any more juicy Star Wars news? Well, we had some. Uh, he already dropped early. Will Obi-Wan season two happen? Will we get Yaya Abdul-Mateen in the Star Wars movie? Or is that done now that? Damon Lindelof is out. Well, I think Jeff addressed most of that. Jeff, any news on Obi Wan season two? Kathleen Kenny kind of alluded to it, and you and said he was open to it. Do you hear anything? I haven't heard anything about it. Um, okay. uh, I mean, I, I don't know if it necessarily makes sense. Um, mm. I, I, I plus he just signed on to a new thing this week that actually sounds pretty cool. Lottie. Where okay. he's going to play a used car salesman who becomes an right. FBI informant. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's going to be for Amazon. So he has his next series lined up. I don't know. It wouldn't shock me, but at the same mm-hmm. time, it doesn't feel like a necessary story. Yeah. It seems like they need to turn the page on all those characters. Okay. Yeah, I kind of feel that way too. Uh, AZ Badfish says, Afternoon Jets, my wife got me a 52-week movie challenge book last Christmas. And next week's challenge is a three-hour epic. I've narrowed it down to Lawrence of Arabia and the right stuff, but can't decide. Can you help me out? Thanks, guys. Love the show. Jeff, Lawrence of Arabia or the right stuff? I I know I'm that guy. The right stuff. (laughs) That's totally Jeff. I say Lawrence of Arabia, so we can't help you decide because we're split on that. Lawrence of Arabia is one of the greatest films ever made. It won Best Picture. (laughs) The right stuff's a damn good film for sure, but it's a three-hour pick about astronauts. Can you hold on? I don't know. We'll see. Um, let us know. Report back with us, AZ. I am two fly cam says Kathleen and Lucas film really think bringing back Boyega and really will build goodwill. I think it's a step in the right direction, but I pray Boyega and Diz- D- Daisy aren't the leads. We need a fresh start with a new different threat. No more Palpatine or the Empire. Yeah, Jeff, from what I understand and what some of the rumors have come out here is that Daisy won't necessarily be the lead. She'll be like the Luke or the Obi Wan of the situation as she rebuilds a new Jedi Order. What do you hear? Yeah, she's definitely not the lead. No, she's like a supporting actress. Right, right. Yeah, and I agree. And look, if John comes in, uh, the only I, I think John would be great to come back because now that we've had all this time, you can create a better thing for Finn. And maybe that was the reason. Like there was just these things that Lindelof didn't feel was the right thing for him. Stephen Knight comes in. Maybe he's got a, a different take on it and can make it work in a way that um, uh, John Boyega himself enjoys and likes. You no, know? so we'll see. We'll see. And remember, those are all British people, so maybe there's something there. Shade EXS says, hey, guys, love the show. Have you heard anything about Luca Guadagnino's upcoming projects, Challengers, Queer, Scarface? Anything, Jeff? Um, I've heard Challengers is really good. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I, I heard it came out really good. Um, Scarface has been very quiet. I mean, that, that's a project I'm, I'm really – and, like, I feel like that got, like – included in the tax credit program at one point like it seemed like they were actually going to make that um so i don't know if there's like a ticking clock on actually getting that money from the state i don't know if you have like you know a set period of time Mm. to catch in on it or whatever but uh no i haven't heard anything about that one and then uh queer i mean i think that's that's you know on track to shoot with with you know with daniel craig as i've sort of been reporting probably this summer there's a lot of things that are going to go this summer you know okay uh, anonymous girl uh, says i heard that pre-production for james gunn's superman movie already started was grace randolph's twitter post true about superman already being cast or having logan lerman attached i think that's been debunked uh, from james himself so what do you think 
I mean, I, I don't think that I don't I, I don't know. I, I don't I don't know. I think that um, it does seem like pre-production has started and, you know, they're going to be shooting in Atlanta. And, and, you know, one of the things that you do in pre-production is costume design. And uh, oh. you, know, you, you got to have the guy for the suit, you know, um, the super suit. So, <laughs> I, I, you know, it's watch it's Jeff of- walk out onto thin ice. Have you seen Jeff Snyder is on thin ice right now, walking out there? <laughs> I I don't get the feeling that they have their guy. I feel like okay, okay. I, don't, I, you know, I, I don't get that vibe, but I think if they're they may be closer than than we think. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> Wouldn't be surprised if they had if they had somebody by. Oh, I want to say Memorial Day weekend, but. Maybe, July, but I feel like July Fourth at the latest. Like it's not going to go like at the, till the end of summer. I think it's going to be before then. Jeff just did a cliffhanger. He was just like climbing out on the rope. All right, Blake Hinton says, "Hey, John and Jeff, hope you're having a great day." Jeff, I was wondering if you've heard any more PTA rumors. I'm assuming the production is on lockdown, but I thought I would check. I, I really haven't. I've I've given you all I've got on the PTA stuff. I mean, as far as I know, it's what Leo Vigo. Mm. I, you know, still Regina Hall. Um, okay. So I think it's those three. I, I don't know that it's Joaquin. I don't know if Joaquin's in it anymore or if Vigo is playing that that role that Joaquin was going to. Okay. Um, but yeah, so th- those are the names. Uh, and yeah, he, he typically keeps things pretty under wraps. I mean, right. Licorice Pizza had like already started filming. I re- really like by the time it was announced, it seemed like. Ugh, that film. I hated that film. Pythagoras, uh, thank you very much, Pythagoras, for that uh, sticker. Appreciate it madly. Uh, let's see. we got a f- couple more here. Uh, finally watching Eastbound. This is Owen Lanning. Finally watching Eastbound and Down. And my goodness, Danny McBride has not missed on, is, has not missed on HBO. That man is single-handedly holding down trashy people entertainment. <laughs> LOL. Jeff. Eastbound and Down is great. I mean, I think that pilot's one of the best pilots ever. Um, <laughs> a, a fantastic show. And I think it's coming back. Yeah, right? yeah. Teach that it's coming back. So yeah, that's what I've heard as well. Uh, Chris uh, Spe- Spreezy says, "Are the two people of color leads still attached to the 2025 Star Wars movie? Not anymore. No, it, it doesn't sound like it. No. Okay. Uh, Phil P saying, uh, "John Jeff, huge love from London. Woo! Thank you, Phil. Thank you, Phil. Thank you, Phil." Galia Production says, "I guess you guys are the true drivers of scoops." Oh, it's time. Should we talk about that one? Uh, okay. If you want, we got one more, and then we can talk about. It. How about that? Well, okay. Just to kind of clear the slate. Andy Soul says, is the David Fincher Squid Game project a remake or a spinoff? Seems like there's potential to make Squid Game into a big international IP. Jeff? I mean, I suppose you could, I mean, when you say a spinoff, I mean, could they just do their own American version and then find a way to connect it? Yeah. You know? It's um, in the universe. Yeah. Right. Uh, you know, since season two of Squid Game isn't necessarily, you know, finished being written. Um, I, I don't know. I, I mean, it seems silly to completely remake it. Doesn't seem like that's what David's approach would be. I just think that this is sort of fertile ground, fertile IP for him to to play in. I just don't know. Yeah, I, I can't sit here and say you know I know what his approach is going to be because I definitely don't. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't want to insult him. Something I said on Movie Talk years ago is that you know I, I always felt a Quiet Place could have expanded to multiple countries: a Russia Quiet Place, a French Quiet Place, a Sp- uh, Mexico quiet place so why can't squid game it's very possible certainly if you accept that universe is existing other countries would imitate that situation so why not it's certainly possible uh then don't tell me we're not heading towards there with what's going on in our actual world politically Tariq watts says if majors is found innocent and there's an overwhelming amount of fan reactions to keep him as kang could that sway disney's decision certainly we saw that with james gunn you know being removed and then finding all the way back to come back to Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, which is coming out in just a few weeks? I mean, yes. <laughs> uh, um, when we say sway Disney's decision, yeah. if he's found innocent, then I don't think that their decision will necessarily need to be swayed. It, yeah. you know, still stick with the guy, right? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think I've just weaseled out of your question <laughs> <laughs> okay all right that's the last one jeff let's get into that uh adam driver is that what you wanted to talk about the adam driver yeah, I, mean, I mean the rumors are resurfacing our, our pal daniel rpk i guess put it out there um yeah. and i have in fact heard that that driver does have the offer uh for, for, for reading fantastic four but this is what we talked about 
I think it was five months ago. I'd say that was the very first name. Right. Yep. I think we, or really potentially anybody, right. you know, seriously anyways, had connected to Fantastic Four. Right. Um, I'd heard that he had been talking about, uh, you know, that he, he'd gone in for Reed. I'd, yeah. I'd mentioned Dr. Doom as well, but I'd said, you know, he already basically fucking played Dr. Doom, like, yeah. you know, in Star Wars. So, True. you know, he wants to do something different. He wants to play the hero now. And I'd mentioned Gosling for Dr. Doom, that Gosling was really the Dr. Doom rumor that I'd heard. No idea if that's going to, you know, end up panning out or whatever. Right, right. Um, but uh, it does seem like Driver is the guy. I mean, okay. and, and, think- and listen, these reports don't all, you know, they don't always shake out. Yeah. But for all the reasons that we talked about five months ago, because I don't think, I don't really think you can judge him by 65, which mm-hmm. was a movie that was sort of like totally abandoned in the marketing. Like I, it, I totally forgot that even came out. It's you know, it's a yeah, like I, I, it's, they, they kind of just dumped that. Yeah, yeah. Then, I don't. I can't just can't say that that got a fair shot in the marketplace. Um, and I, but it's again, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who they fucking cast, right? right because right. you know whether how many bombs they have on their resume. Whoever gets cast, like Fantastic Four is going to be huge. So yeah, true, very true. Um, all right, uh, we'll see what happens with that. Uh, but I think it's an interesting choice. I like Adam Driver uh, as an actor, obviously, but like. Playing intelligent roles, playing a guy who could maybe lose control in certain moments. Reed Richards has had his for all the for all the um, legacy of Reed Richards as being this calm, intelligent dude in charge of this team. Reed has had his moments when he's let his anger get the best of him in the comics. So we could certainly see that uh, as a new approach to Reed Richards in on film because we haven't really seen that with the previous two Reed Richards. Um, you know, it, it, even though one of them was played by Miles Teller, it, we haven't quite seen that yet. So I would look forward to seeing. Now you've got to, I mean, how do you fill out the rest of that cast? You have someone like Adam Driver, you got to cast somebody as his wife, Sue Storm, who is just as powerful of an actress and can go toe to toe with Adam. Uh, so I'm going to be very curious to see who they cast now as Sue Storm. Uh, that's going to be real interesting. The thing, and Johnny, that's those are going to be fine, but Sue Storm is really the integral one now if you really lock down Adam Driver. Again, it, it does seem like we're going to get a person of a person of color playing Johnny Storm. That's my bet. Mm, yeah, why not? We had that with Michael B. Jordan in the last one, uh, so I wouldn't be surprised yeah. if it happened here. Okay. Um, all right. Um, what do we want to do? The it's four forty-five. What do you want to do? You want to do the draft? You want to do more quick news yeah, stories? Well, you let's do? do another five, five to ten minutes of, of of stories, and then we'll do the draft. Uh, okay. There's a few others. So Louis Leterrier okay. coming back for Fast Eleven. Yeah, no. Surprise. I mean. You know, I think this is just a matter of Louis. You bailed us out, right, for Fast X because just didn't Justin mm. Lin leave that movie like kind of like right in the middle? Yeah, like, right, right before, in the middle. Whatever it was, he right just, in the middle of a video with Vin. Yeah, he yeah, like, he basically like walked out, <laughs> <laughs> uh, catching everybody off guard. Um, you know, said that he had to work on his mental health or whatever it was. Yeah, and so they got Louis Leterrier, who's a, a pro, a pro, you know, a, a studio veteran to, to step in. I'm sure this was sort of part of the deal. Like, listen, man, I know you didn't really, you weren't involved in, in putting this movie together. You didn't really handle the cast or the right, you know, whatever it was. Yeah. Do this for us. And then you'll have a little bit more creative control on the next one. Yeah. Well, yeah, it makes sense. And look, it's not like Leterrier's phone was ringing off the hook with, um, you know, a list franchise offers. So why not jump in? Uh, Cause I know his Hulk, gets a little, in my opinion, unfairly vilified in the MCU. He is an MCU director. That Hulk film qualifies for the MCU. Um, and I think he's a good director. He's hit or miss sometimes, but when he hits, he's good. You know, so maybe Very he common. found something. And if people like this one, get you excited for the level, well, then why not? You know, This is the job. Let me tell you something. This is the job that no one in Hollywood wants. <laughs> no one wants to work with all, all due respect to my friends at Universal. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be a hit movie, and I actually think that this looks like fun. Yeah, um, I, I actually think Fast X looks like, like a lot of fun. I'm I'm excited about it, but uh, yeah, um, <laughs> I, I th- this is not a job that directors fight for. Okay, so you know yeah. the fact that they're getting Louis back, like more power to him. Um, Killers of the Flower Moon, not four hours, not three hours and fifty four minutes. It's three hours and twenty six minutes. John, are you relieved? Do you not give a shit? Is there too much being made about the run times these days? Has Scorsese earned it? I mean, this guy's not, you know, Ari Aster. Like, he has a record. 
How dare you? Um, I did not. I skipped my screening the other night uh, because I just didn't want to sit in a room full of people. There is nobody who has an R, a ticket for Bo is Afraid tomorrow at three o'clock. So I might be going to see it then by myself, which I, I would prefer to see it that way. But that being said, I haven't been let down by too many of the films recently with long run times. I know people have complained about them and got up in their feelings about them, but I haven't really been that bothered by it. Now, I haven't seen Bo's Afraid, so that may change my tune, but I enjoyed um, uh, Bardo. I enjoyed The Batman. I've enjoyed a lot of these long films that have come out. Did so... you go to the bathroom during The Batman? No. I stayed the whole time on my screen. I didn't want to watch a damn thing in that screen. I really enjoyed the movie. So, okay. And what was the I one hate, that was I just... That. What's that? I hate like having to go to the bathroom in the middle of a movie. Right. That's why I don't drink too much before I go in there with a three hour. What was the one that just came out that was three hours and people said, oh, John Wick, two hours and 45 minutes. That felt like it was an hour and a half. It was so oh, good. God. So like it was all day to me. It just was. No, um, just so to me, going downstairs and up and down, <laughs> up and down. Pick a fucking direction, John Wick. <laughs> but to me, uh, I, I give the benefit of the doubt here to Scorsese because I liked The Irishman, and that was three hours. And I have rewatched The Irishman like five times already um, because I really enjoy the movie, and I enjoy what he did with that. So I'm interested to see if this is going to be worth it, three hours and 26 yeah, minutes. The fellas is long, Heat's long. I, I, there are yeah. some great movies. I have no pro. A great movie, like, it's the whole mm -hmm. Ebert quote, right? A great yep. movie you know, can't be longer and a bad movie can't be any shorter. Right. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, there's a new project from, uh, and that's going to start Angelina Jolie and Halle Berry as warring spies. What do you think of these two Oscar winners pairing up for the first time? Um, I'm not, I'm not a hundred. If this is 1999 or 2002, 2000, maybe I'm excited about this, but in 2023, I'm not quite as excited about this. Isn't Joey's that amazing, last... John? Isn't that amazing that, like, yeah. in 2003, if someone was like Angelina Jolie, Halle Berry, like, this would be a big movie, right? Oh, Who would have thought we'd be like looking at each other, like, yo, 20 years from now, it's going to be the same people? <laughs> <laughs> they don't have movie stars anymore. Exactly. And look, Halle's, Halle's a good actress. She's not a great actress. I know she won an Oscar for Monsters Ball. So I don't, I don't really run to see her movies. And certainly the last two films haven't done well. The one she directed and the other one she did before that. Um, I like she was good John Wick. That's where she belongs. Ensemble character. That's a good place for Hallie. In terms of being able to sell a film, I don't... I mean, Joe Lee's last film, that fire thing, came and went. So there hasn't been much. And she's got something she's directed with Sam Hayek that's supposed to be coming out. But like these two, I, I don't know if this necessarily moves the needle no matter, no matter how much these websites want to crow about it. I don't right. think the general populace it's is really going to be that effective by but right, does it ultimately make for a good movie at, at the end of the day? I guess I guess we'll see. It all yeah. depends, again, on the story. What is the hook? What is the entry point into this pairing? Um, Keanu, Keanu Reeves working oh, Wait, wait, Seth one more thing. And that's Nikki Caro directing it. That Mulan wasn't that well received. So, you know, again. Are you for... doing that movie? The, huh? the Jolie, Halle yeah. Berry movie? Yeah, that's Nikki Caro, isn't it? I don't know, but that doesn't okay. sound right. But okay. Go ahead, go ahead, keep going. I'll correct myself. Yeah, if I'm wrong. Keanu's but, doing yeah. Seth Rogen and Aziz. Uh, he, he's doing a movie with those guys. So I think that that sounds promising. This is going to be Aziz's directorial debut mm -hmm. after the last mm -hmm. one got canceled, and it sounds like it's not coming back. Bill Murray won. Yeah. Fair. Oh, sorry, yeah. Roseanne. Roseanne Liang, who did Shadow in the Cloud with Glowy right. Grace Moretz, which I thought was great. Doing. Which yeah. I thought I thought Shadow in the Cloud was really fucking good. Did you see that? No, I did not see that. I was like, I don't know if this is for me. So you liked it. All right. I'll watch yeah. it. Yeah. I don't know that it's for you either, but it, that's, a, <laughs> that's, a, that's a fun fucking midnight movie, dude. Roseanne Liang, she deserves props for that. Okay. Uh, okay so Keanu Reeves and Seth Rogen are Lionsgate's golden boys. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Point Grey's deal, you know, is at, is at Lionsgate. Keanu is John Wick and everything. Now they're working together. They're working with Aziz. Do you like this, this triplet? Yeah, I think it's a good triplet. I don't know how well it's going to do box office wise, but I think it's a good triplet. And look, what happened with on the set of, uh, on that film that Aziz was directing initially was not probably his fault. It just seemed yeah. to be his fault. So as long as he keeps Bill Murray away from that set, he should be fine. And clearly he wanted to work with Seth Rogen because he has transported Seth Rogen onto this film. So uh, I think it's a good combo of people 
could be a lot of fun, to be honest. All right. I like the idea of Keanu doing a comedy as well. Clint yeah. Eastwood announced uh, what could be his final film. It's called Juror Number Two. It's a thriller with Nicholas Holt. He's a guy on a jury. Uh, you know, he's going to be with Tony Collette. She's playing the prosecutor. I think we talked about this one on the show. We did. We? Tony Collette's the new thing, though. We did talk about Holt. We talked about Eastwood. Tony Collette's okay, the new thing. Yeah, she, she's the prosecutor. Um, so you're saying there won't be a Mafia Mama franchise? Is that what you're saying? Is that what you're saying to me? There's not going to be? We'll see. We'll show. see. Um, Ryan Reynolds announced a new project with Jason Momoa and Aubrey Plaza called Animal Friends. That sounded interesting. Mm. Uh, there was some casting on Knuckles. Um, yeah. Big Cuddy, you know, stuff like that. Adam Pally coming back. Yeah, are you going yeah, yeah. you know, to watch the Knuckles TV series? I haven't it? watched the sequel to Sonic, so I don't mm-hmm. know if I'm going to watch Knuckles. But I love the like- Elba, man. So, you know. uh, did you so, see the trailer yeah. for All the Light We Cannot See? That's all. That's a Jeff Snyder sh- uh, f- uh, show or film. It's not really a John Rocas show or okay. film. Yeah. Um, give us your quick take on Evil Dead Rise. Oh, Evil Dead Rise. I really enjoyed it for what it was. If you're not caught up in like, I want a layered, complex story in a horror film, then you're going to have a good time with this. There's a lot of goriness, a lot of blood. There's some really unsettling, scary moments. Uh, when they're dealing with the book and they're dealing with some of the stuff from the Evil Dead franchise, the foundational pieces of the franchise. But I thought the acting across the board from everybody was really good, especially the main girl. What's her name? Abby Elliott? Is that her name? She was... Alyssa I, I, Sutherland, right? Alyssa Sutherland is the mom, but the, oh, the girl oh, that oh. fights her sister, her, she's oh. the one that stood out to me. I mean, that's the tougher role. The other role where you're getting to be evil, that's the fun role. You can have fun with that. Alyssa does a nice job with that. But I thought the kids did a really nice job. And her sister, that's the lead of the film. She was excellent um, as this kind of female warrior in a horror film, The Last Girl or whatever they say. Um, right. So, yeah, I enjoyed it. I thought it was one, but I mean, it's not groundbreaking. It's just a good installment that uh, if you would like horror films, I think you're going to have some fun with it. Got it. Yes, of course. Horror, horror people are the worst when it comes to hyperbole. Don't forget that. And I am <laughs> like, I'm, like dipped in, died in the wool, I guess you could say, yeah. horror fan. But yeah, horror critics, man talk about hyperbole um did you see the the covenant i did see the covenant i i liked the covenant a lot as a military man i'm always skeptical of these military movies that the default to the rah 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 bullshit none of that is here guy Ritchie strips this thing down it's gritty it's tough it takes its time you're on two separate journeys in the movie happening one right after the other so that's the thing you got to focus on this is not a action you know crazy act this there is action in the movie but it's more about what the endurance the drive the persistence and about helping one another even though other people tell you that you shouldn't even though there are racist or there are xenophobic attempts to kind of keep certain people in places there's more to explore here and i think guy Ritchie's. i love that he's doing these darker films wrath of man and this these more serious films i want to see more of this guy Ritchie. I don't think you should do another British gangster film for a while. Focus on this guy, Richie. This guy, Richie, has a shot to get an Oscar. And I want to see more of this guy, Richie. That's what I would say. Um, I liked it a lot as well. Yeah. Uh, I'm, Were you we surprised might... that you liked it a lot? No, I I'd okay. heard that it was good from someone who'd seen it kind of well in advance. Um, gotcha. And they, they were like, oh, this is a Jeff Snyder movie. You're going to like this. And sure yeah. enough, I did. Uh, and, and the guy I saw it with, he thought it was okay, um, but I liked it more than he did, uh, which is which is rare. Um, and so, was yeah. Look from Weber? Weber? Was it Aaron Weber? On... <laughs> no, it was not. Uh, look for my review tomorrow on lamag.com. Yeah. Um, wait, there was one other thing. Oh, yeah. Darcy, Juno Tempest. Darcy 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 is the star of that movie. Yeah, yeah. What did, you, um, did you see the other movies coming out this week, which are To Catch a Killer and Somewhere in Queens? I have not seen either one of those. Is, some, is that the Ray Romano one, the yeah. Somewhere in Queens? I have not seen that one, no. All right, thumbs up on, on Somewhere in Queens. I really like okay. that. Good. Like it, I, I got emotional. Um, oh, wow. Okay. I, I cried a fair amount at, at Somewhere in Queens. It, it was good. I like. I just like Ray Romano. Uh, yeah, he, he's a good too. writer. Um, and then To Catch a Killer was good, but should have been better. It goes off okay. the rails a little in the third act. Uh, didn't love. It didn't really stick the landing for me. But the first hour is pretty solid. Okay. Um, you know, gritty little serial killer sh- starring Shailene and, and Ben Mendelsohn. Um, okay. Uh, lastly, before we do the summer draft, what do you think of Juno Temple doing uh, Venom Three? I think it makes all the sense in the world. Michelle Williams always felt like weirdly out of out of left field kind of casting for this type of thing, considering the vibe they were Not going for. That world, yeah. 
but yeah, Not for that fit. world, yeah. And Juno fits so much better for that world. If you if you just know Juno from Ted Lasso, you've done yourself a disservice. She's been in so many interesting films and played different roles, and she understands the assignment in every movie she's in. So I think she can bring the right mixture of like tongue in cheek and horror and stakes and whatever you, depending on what's called for in whatever scene that she's going to be in in that film. So to me. I think it's a smarter move to go this route. Her and Tom Hardy might have better better chemistry in the film, and uh, it might even elevate the film in some strange way, to be honest with you. Having someone who understands the assignment, it doesn't feel like they're sticking out like a sore thumb. Not because she's not a good actress. I, I like right. her. I think she's a very interesting actress. And yeah. um, even though Venom 2 was pretty disappointing, uh, you know, I'm, I'm down to give this one a shot with her and, and Tom Hardy. All yeah. right. We're going to do All the right. summer draft now. So can I – should on. I take Let's, it Take a break. Yeah, let's take a break, and take then we'll break. jump into the summer draft. So we'll take a break real quick. Get your pencils ready. We're going to do our summer draft movie, uh, 2023 summer draft movie, right after this. All right, we're back. Let's do this thing. Please remember to subscribe to the channel right now. Hit a like on this video. Leave a comment if you're watching later. Uh, tell us if we're full of shit or tell us if we're not full of shit. We love it. Jeff, 2023 summer movie draft. Take it away. Oh, okay, the whole point of this exercise, though, we're going to do this quickly, okay? We're not going to dilly-dally. We're going to give our selection maybe a line or two about why we're yeah. confident in it, and we're going to move on. Okay. Uh, so this, mo this summer draft is just a fun little exercise, an attempt to do something different on this podcast. Okay. Um, so it's not about award – you know, is this movie going to be in the awards race? It's not about what is who's going to win the box office, the summer box office. That stuff doesn't interest me. Right. The point of this is to – Pick the best team, the best 10 players, essentially, the okay. best roster. And, uh, like, imagine these are the only 10 movie tickets you're getting this summer. Right. Okay? Um, and at the end, you guys can be the judge. You can leave a comment uh, on YouTube um, after the show wraps. But maybe we'll do, like, a little five minutes of, of, of reactions. And if you pay for a stream uh, lab, you can tell us who actually won, uh, won and, and we'll talk about your opinion on, right now. Okay, right. so here we go. Do you, now, John, do you want to do one, two, three, four, et cetera, or should the yeah. first pick be so important that it should be a one, four split and, two, and, and the, the second person goes two, three? You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Look, I don't know if I rank these by importance. I just put 10 on the list. It's, not it's just okay. 10 movies that you're like, I'm confident these movies are going to be good. And yeah. at, the end of, at the end of the summer, we're going to look back and say, these 10 movies were better than these 10 movies. Oh, interesting. Okay. All right. Um, one on your team. What's that? Streaming is allowed. So movies that yeah. don't make any money at all, but you're proud to have it on your, on your squad because it yeah. got great reviews. Okay. I think there's one streaming film on my, on my, uh, so thing. do you want, do you want to do one, two, you know, how do you want to do it? One, four. Yeah, sure. Split? One, four, two, three. And after four, we'll, we'll, we'll trade off. So okay. do you want one, four or two, three? Uh, I'll do two, three. Okay, then I will take one for in this, and we're gonna just go. You ready? Okay. Yeah, go ahead. With the first pick of the summer movie draft, uh -huh. I'm going with my man. Yeah, Tom Cruise in Mission Impossible okay. Seven. This is the best live action franchise going right now. I can't wait for a new MI Seven, uh, a new a new Mission Impossible movie. John, you're on the fucking clock, bro. Now, clarification. So if that gets removed, I can't select it. Is that how this works? No. Okay. No. All right. So then my number two, so I should have gotten 20 just in case. So then my number two is, or number one is Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. That's okay. absolutely going to shock the world. People are going to be very emotional. They're going to love this film, and it's going to end the trilogy. And I think some people are going to die, and that's going to affect the MCU going forward for sure. If you if you make the wrong pick here, yeah, I'm going to declare this draft already over. But go on. Oh, Jesus Christ. All right. So my number three is Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. That's my other third one that I think is going to rock people's world. They're going to love it. I got to see 20 minutes of it last year at CinemaCon, and then the new trailers have been nothing but extraordinary and fantastic. This one's going to do better than the first one, and I think it's going to be great. So those are my that's my two, three. Okay, with Go the ahead. fourth pick, I, yeah. I've already declaring this over. <laughs> uh, I'm going to say Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer. Oh, right. Like 10 pick. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna. I wound up with mission. My top two picks were Mission Impossible and Oppenheimer. Going into this, Spider Man was high on the draft board, but uh, uh, Guardians. I think you could you could have gotten that a little bit later, John. <laughs> no, I didn't want to get it a little bit later. All right, all right. Do I go the, next now, or do you go next? It's, it's your turn now. We just go every other. 
Okay, so God, let me put, let me because I want to make sure I get this right here uh, and across the Spider Verse. That's those are my choices. So then my next choice is the Flash. Uh, there's no way that film isn't great. There's no way that film isn't making two billion dollars. I'm telling you right now, two billion dollars for the Flash. Book it. Put it on the table. It's absolutely happening. Go ahead. All right, I'm going to go with that movie that I've heard really good buzz about, starring Zendaya, Challengers, Ooh. from Luca Guadagnino. Okay, okay. Uh, and again, that I've just heard it, it turned out really well. I think Luca's a great director, and, and she's a fantastic actress. Um, I would be ashamed of myself if I didn't put this one on my list, so I'm taking it early just because I think you would try to fuck me by taking it out from under me and ruining my standing in the Latino community. Blue Beetle is my next choice. Blue Beetle, absolutely. This one, that trailer looked a, like a lot of fun, and we were going to get a really interesting film here. A lot of family involved in a new approach that's going to make people smile about DC again. So Blue Beetle is my choice. Okay, let's see. Uh, I am going to go with a movie that is flying under the radar right now. It doesn't even have a title, but there is a release date. Okay. And that is the untitled Please Don't Destroy movie starring Ooh. the guy, Please Don't Destroy guys from Saturday Night Live. I love their, their short films. I love their videos. So whatever that movie turns out to be, yeah. I'm here for the Please Don't Destroy movie. Yeah. Uh, I, I went into a wormhole with the Don't Destroy, Please Don't Destroy guys. Oh my God, dude. There's some G I would argue that their sketches overall are better than the Lonely Island sketches, but the songs the Lonely Island do is, of course, much better than anything they do. But good's good stuff to please don't destroy, guys. All right. You know what? Uh, I, this is a I, I won't respect myself in the morning, even though you won't respect me right now for choosing this if I don't choose it, but I'm going to take Barbie right now. I think Barbie is going to shock the pick. world. That's a yeah. good pick. Yeah. I think Barbie is going to shock the world, and people are going to love that movie, and they're going to surprisingly love that movie. And Greta Gerwig has not let me down yet. Lady Bird and Little Women are two fantastic films, so I think she's going to find the subversive way to talk about Barbie without cutting it off at its knees and pissing off Mattel. Not an easy thing to do. All right. I'm going to go with, since I have a bunch of smaller titles here that I don't think okay. are going to end up drafting, I'm going to go with the last big one on my list, which is um, a Netflix movie, and that is Extraction 2. Oh, you damn, you son of a bitch. Trailer? Like, that trailer looks <sighs> fucking gnarly with Chris Hemsworth. So, Extraction 2, welcome to, to my team. Um, and so now, to recap, this is halftime. We're, we're just doing uh, only doing 10 apiece. But we okay. have five apiece now. So, I have Mission Impossible 7, Oppenheimer, Challengers, Please Don't Destroy, and Extraction 2. And John has Guardians of the Galaxy 3, Spider-Man Across the Universe, The Flash, Blue Beetle, and Barbie. He is very... Very super he man, uh, super hero heavy. Excuse me. Yes, yes. Um, all right, who's the next choice? You're you're up next. Get some balance on this squad, John. All right, I'm gonna balance right now with a streaming film. Uh, I've been looking forward. To, I'm already putting it on my list because I'm drafting it. As soon as I saw the trailer for this one, I was like, "This is a must watch for the summer of 2023." It is. They they cloned Tyrone. That looks hilarious. Jamie Fox, John Boyega in this. Uh, that trailer, if you haven't seen, oh, and Toyota Paris, uh, if, if you haven't seen that trailer, that trailer is worth your two minutes and 20 seconds. It will make you laugh. And like all these good comedies have some social commentary within it about what they're doing and how the culture is trying to steal from black people. It's in essence what you're seeing nowadays on TikTok, where all these white creators are taking black dancer cre black dancing creations and trying to make them their own for, for hits and views and likes. So there's something really funny in this and also a good commentary. So they clone Tyrone is my choice there. Go ahead, man. Well, the one that I was nervous about you picking, and so I'm going to take it so I don't give myself a heart attack here, is the Michael J. Fox documentary, oh, Still, which I yeah. saw at Sundance, and is absolutely fantastic. When you guys yeah. see that movie, you're going to be like, oh, man, how did uh, you know? How did you not draft this one? Oh, it's yep. great. I keep waiting for that one to show up on my screeners app, and it hasn't yet. I'm just like, every day I'm checking it. Every day I'm checking it. Uh, by the way, if you guys haven't seen the Boris Becker one on Apple TV Plus, I can't recommend it enough. The Boris Becker documentary, it's two parts. It's almost four hours. It's an incredible, incredible watch. I just finished it. You saw um, what did show up today in, in the Apple press screening. I did not. I didn't look it up. What, what, what showed up? Our boy Tommy Holland. Ooh, nice. All right. Maybe I got something to watch there. The lady's out till 10 p.m. tonight. So maybe something to watch. I have like 
15 shows to watch. There's a million shows coming out right now. It's insane. I know. I still haven't even watched Tetris yet. All right. Um, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. James Mangold about to do a Star Wars film. Logan, the previous Wolverine film. Fantastic actor or director, rather. And I think Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny is going to surprise a lot of people. And there's going to be grown men reduced to tears in front of their children in those theaters. So Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny is my choice there. Go ahead. All right. I will take A24's horror movie, Talk to Me, which is Ooh. another Sundance title. Uh, you know, I, I didn't love that trailer, but I do think that they will cut another one and it will get people in the theater and it will be a very buzzy horror movie this summer. I thought you didn't like the trailer. I didn't, but I've seen okay. the movie. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, okay, I, okay. I saw the movie Sundance. The movie is pretty good. Okay. It, it, it didn't fully, uh, you know, land. It wasn't 100% for me, but um, it was, a, you know, a good triple. You're like, pretty, pretty, pretty good. Um, Between a double and a triple, that one. Um, okay. But uh, right. I think that that'll get genre fans talking. Anyways, you got three more movies? No, yes, yep. three more. Three more. Okay. Let's go. Let's go to the buzzy one that a lot of people are talking about comedy-wise, Joyride. That trailer looks fantastic. I think that's going to be the hit surprise hit of the summer um i think a lot of people are going to be excited to see this one already the reviews and the buzz coming out of the festivals where it's screened has been nothing but positive so i would not be surprised if joy ride becomes one of the best films of the summer and that people are talking about it like they talked about girls trip uh years ago uh so i have a feeling that's going to be great there you go i am going to counter your joy ride with an indie comedy of my own uh okay. and that is uh that also has festival buzz and that is blackberry Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, the Blackberry movie with um, with Glenn Howerton from It's Always Sunny and, and Jay Baruchel. The Baruchel looks good, right? He looks good in that film. So, yeah, absolutely. I like that idea. Um, I would have said White Man Can't Jump here, but that trailer looked horrible. So I'm not going to say that here. But I am going to put The Blackening. The Blackening looks hilarious. A nice genre horror film that is, of course, making fun of the tropes of how black people are treated in horror films. Uh, so I think it's hilarious when they're all like, they can't kill all of us. So one of us got to survive. So there's just so much comedy in that um, uh, film. And again, subversive commentary, social commentary, but also commentary about horror films. So it works in a meta way as well as surface level being probably going to be a fantastic horror film. So The Blackening. I'm a, uh, I, did, I saw The Blackening at a festival. And? And... You don't like it? it? Oh, okay. Um, uh, I'm going to go with past lives here, which is the, the, you know, nice the, the sensation that I love this trailer. I have not seen the movie, but everybody loved the, the film at Sundance. So that's right. another H24 title for me. And give me your final movie, John. <sighs> you took a lot of them, man. Um, shit. Well, I'm which, gonna which default... funny because you're on, you have taken none of them. I've gotten <laughs> all 10 of my movies. That's how different minded we are. That's a, it's like incredible that we did not pick one movie. You didn't pick one yeah. movie on my list. I mean, I can't, I cannot speak to your taste, which is not that good. And so, unfortunately, well, we'll we're see not going to cross taste to the people. But go ahead, give me your last movie. <laughs> no, I default to you. I'm going to find another one because I don't like the one I have a tenth. Go ahead. This is a risky one, considering. So this is what's left on the board before I give my last yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, there's yeah. white men can't jump. There's flame and hot. Which I'm, yes. you know, able to wear. That's, that's got good buzz. Heart of Stone, the Gal Gadot Netflix spy movie, a Gran Turismo movie, The Last yeah. Voyage of the Denver, which I think I like that trailer, the T uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles animated okay. movie, okay. The Meg 2, The Haunted yes. Mansion, Elemental, which is a Pixar movie, mm -hmm. Jennifer Lawrence, No Hard Feelings, Wes Anderson's Asteroid City, Fast mm -hmm. X, Transformers, and then my pick for the final one. Go Over ahead. all those movies, I'm going to lay it out there. I'm going to go with Master Gardener. Oh, you are taking the Paul Schrader one, even though me. you haven't been a Paul Schrader fan. That's right. I, I just have faith in Joel Edgerton and that trailer. Uh, there was something about that story that resonated with me, so uh, I am looking forward to that one. Fuck. All right. Look, I would have normally defaulted to Asteroid City, but I don't think that's going to make any money, and I don't know if you Transformers. Yeah, well, we've already talked. We said what we think is going to be the movies of the summer, and I've heard bad things about Transformers, so I can't put it on my list. Um, and and I was on the fence about Strays. I was real close to putting Strays on the list, 
But I think I have to default to a tried and true anchor here to wrap around the, the tug of war. And that is elemental. I think elemental from what I understand from people who have, who, who got to go to uh, Pixar and see the 20 minutes of the movie. I had two DMS from fellow critics who sent me after watching my reaction to the trailer saying, this film is so much better than that trailer is telling you. So I'm going to default to trusting okay. Pixar and trusting elemental that it'll be great. Spider-Man across the universe is the movie that I'm jealous that you got. Is there a movie that I got that you're jealous about? Oh, are you fucking kidding me? You think you're a Tom Cruise fan. Go fuck yourself. You took Mission Impossible from me, and I will cut your nuts off. You chose two and three. What did you think? I was not going to take that. I didn't think you were going to take Mission Impossible. You don't strike me as an adventurous man. You barely leave your house. So I I didn't strike you as a guy who would go all over the world. That was a no-brainer, the movie of summer. So I'm going to recap it, and then and then we'll just give people a few minutes to, to, to respond. Sounds we'll good. Leave. Right. Um, okay. I wound up with Mission Impossible 7, Oppenheimer, mm-hmm. Challengers, the Please Don't Destroy movie, Extraction 2, the Michael J. Fox documentary, A24's Talk to Me, A24's mm-hmm. Past Lives, Paul Schrader's Master Gardener, and the Blackberry movie. Johnny, got Guardians that. of the Galaxy 3, Spider-Man Across the Universe, Spider-Man. The Flash, yeah. Blue Beetle, Barbie, Indiana Jones Five, mm-hmm. they, and then and then and Pixar's Elemental, and yeah. then he got the uh, some smaller movies like They Clone Tyrone, Joyride, the comedy, and mm-hmm. The Blackening. The Blackening, yeah. The blackening. So you guys tell me who you think won this draft. Leave a comment on YouTube. We yeah. have any? Do we? Uh, we just take any questions. Otherwise, what we can sign off. All right. Let me see what we got here. Um. Yeah, let's, let's hit some of these super chats. There's some left. If you guys want to send in a stream lab, do it now, but we're running out of time. So just letting you know, I'm just going to read these. I don't think I could bring it up because they were earlier. Here we go. Here's one from uh, Jem. It said, thoughts on Killer Heat from Amazon starring Joseph Gordon-Levitt and Richard Madden. Apparently, it's a murder mystery. Have you heard about this, Jeff? I feel like it was I, – I saw an announcement about it, but I didn't even – I don't know. The title doesn't even ring a bell. Um, I yeah. don't think I knew that it was a murder mystery. It sounds interesting. I'm all for more murder mysteries uh sure okay. i like i like jgl okay um that's it that's all we had so if we want we should we should oh. wrap it up there all okay right. we, can, we can wrap it up people are saying a lot john's getting a lot of love here in the comments from the comic book movie fans they, they like his lineup i know so. my audience son i know all my right. audience um all right yeah i know adam says sorry roca jeff's got you with that uh am i i know that's that's sways that's sways that's at least Guys. That's two or three picks. That's a top heavy lineup, right now. But but if LeBron goes out with that ankle injury, then you know the team's all fucked. So I'll have them to put that out. Yeah, right was a good pick, John. Thank you. I'm Two Fly Cam says, uh, "Yikes, John Snyder killed you." LOL. And no one picked Little Mermaid. Mm-mm. Well, I, I, <laughs> the second they said it was two hours and fifteen minutes, and they changed the lyrics to the music to the songs. Forget it. Disney, people are going to be crazy about that film. Uh, Annabelle Rubin says, Snyder, Rad, Potty Mouth, Roca, always welcome. Any word on John Wick and Scream 6 dates on VOD as well as Blu-ray? Good day and evening to all. I haven't heard anything. Uh, have you, Jeff? No, is Scream 6 not available on VOD? That'll be out like any any day. Yeah, like, probably. I, I, I imagine that, that, I mean, what's 40... Two, two days or something yeah yeah it'll probably be there all right let's wrap it up there thank you all so much for joining us for this live episode of the hot mic i appreciate it madly who's commented there you go i uh, appreciate it madly we do we appreciate madly we appreciate y'all remember this is a podcast as well so you can download the podcast subscribe to the podcast wherever you download podcasts and listen to us if you need to listen to anything again i try to put time codes as quickly as i can down below for anybody who comes in later misses it so check that out as well leave a comment leave a like subscribe to the channel subscribe to the channel and hit that bell button jeff another fun show where can they find you brother above the line.com btlnews.com lamag.com for tomorrow's review of guy ritchie's the covenant and my boy jake jakey g and then I will be at CinemaCon next week. Unfortunately, without you, John, we, we no, will no. miss you. I'll, I will leave a seat next to me uh, open <laughs> for, you. for your spirit. Um, and so hopefully uh, the podcast probably won't be on Thursday next week, but maybe on Friday. Okay, sounds good. Don't doubt me, though. I may be sitting next to you. We'll see. I'm going to shake a lot of trees over the next few days. Uh, as for you, you can find me at The Roca Says on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok, The Outlaw Nation on Twitch. And, of course, all the other podcasts I do, the Geek Buddies and the Cinephiles that are out there for you all to enjoy. Tomorrow, 11 a.m. PT live, uh, me and, uh, my, and Michael Vogel will be welcoming Steve Morris and Scott Vance 
to talk that finale of Picard. We're going to be live. So if you liked it, you want to talk about the season, come and join us and hang out with us for about 90 minutes talking about that finale, 11 a.m. PT tomorrow. Just drop all the stuff for Mandalorian, so watch all those reviews as well. And I will have my review out for Evil Dead Rise. All right, y'all take care of yourselves. Be well, and we'll talk to you next time with another brand new episode of the Hot Mic. Peace. Thank you.